All right, game on. What's up, y'all? Especially all you Dodger fans. I've got my good friend Jeff Snyder here. Uh, we've actually how long have we known each other? Uh, what six, seven years? Six or seven years. And we, I think we like met on Twitter. We were Twitter friends first, yeah. yeah and and then, then your son was playing a baseball game right before my son at the same field, and we like recognized each other at the same moment. Like, yeah. Scott, Jeff. That's, that's right. That's right. We love baseball, obviously. So. Uh, he is the host of Locked on Dodgers, the YouTube video or channel that every Dodger fan should be following. So make sure to check it out. Anyway, Jeff and I are working on some really, really cool things. Uh, all things Dodgers, Dodger Yard, met yesterday. Uh, this has been a long time coming. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to uh, some of the stuff that we're talking about. But today we want to talk about this Padres series. There's a lot to talk about, but in particular... We want to talk about some of the recent games. Last night's game was awesome, as opposed to the year, the, the, the game prior. Sure yeah, yeah, I, I prefer the wins. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. we definitely prefer <laughs> the wins. Um, but we came out victorious, victorious last night. We've got a game tomorrow in LA at home. Are we going to win that game? Yeah, there's no point winning game four if you're not going to win game five, right? That's right. Yeah, that's right. It's okay to be optimistic, y'all. Yesterday we talked about how some fans, it's like they just throw in the towel. Why, why is that? Especially I, Dodger fans. I think it's a defense mechanism because it hurts to get sad when your team loses. And we as Dodger fans have, unfortunately, a lot of experience with that. And so I think it's a defense mechanism to just not get your hopes up. But for me, it, I see it as like you're just locking in the pain. Like the pain is going to come. If the Dodgers lose, if the Dodgers don't win the World Series, at some point we're going to be sad. Yeah. You know, But we don't have to start being sad early because right now there's still a chance they might win the World Series and we don't have to be sad. That's right. That's right. You said something yesterday I absolutely loved. You said something about optimism. What did you say? There's only one way to live. Yeah, there's no point not being optimistic. It's, it's like my, the analogy I use is in basketball. If a guy gets in foul trouble, they take him out of the game. Well, what's the penalty for fouling out? You have to come out of the game. All you're doing is locking in the penalty. And it's even worse as a fan because in basketball, at least, you, you, know, you can make a case for, oh, we want to pick which minutes he's playing, all that. Right now, the sadness is not guaranteed. And right. so don't be sad until you have That's to be right. sad. But even then, don't be sad because this is Dodger baseball, and we have a lot of things to be very happy about. Still could be worse. We could be Giants fans. Oh, the White Sox, man. Oh, the White Sox this year. But, oh. yeah, being a Giants fan is worse. So a question for you. If you had to get rid of one baseball organization on planet Earth, which one would it be? Um. I don't know. I like baseball too much because even, I mean, the Giants are my least favorite team. They're the team I hate, but I also love the rivalry, you know? Yeah, it's it's uh, necessary. Right answer. I was actually hoping for that answer because you take away the Giants, you take away that rivalry, which brings so much good yeah. to the sport. Right? Yeah, there, there's a few fan bases I wouldn't mind getting rid of. But, you know, that, that's another story. <laughs> the, the franchises, no. I, I, like, I like all of them. Yeah, just I like, like that they all exist. Now ask me the same question and see what I say. All right, Scott, same question. Astros. <laughs> Even then, it's mostly the fans. It's like, you yeah. know, the people who doubled down, it's like, just admit the fact that your team cheated and they got caught. Yeah. You know, nothing happened to them. You know, you still got your World Series title, but you don't got to double down yeah, and like exactly. pretend they didn't do anything exactly. wrong, you know? Exactly. No, I'm just teasing. There's a rivalry there, you know? Um, definitely won't be meeting them in the World Series this year, and I hope we never do again. But uh, if you could see anyone in the World Series play the Dodgers, who would it be? As long as I could guarantee a win, you know, I, I'd love to see another Dodgers Yankees World Series. I oh, wanted man. Dodgers Orioles because Sandy Koufax's career ended with a loss to the Orioles in the World Series. Right, right. And with not knowing if Clayton Kershaw's career is ending or not, I thought if the Dodgers could beat the Orioles in the World Series, that would be a, a nice, you know, bookend there for, for Kershaw's career if yeah. he does decide to hang it up. Um, but obviously, Dodgers, I, I don't care. I want the Dodgers to win. I don't care who they play. Like, and, and I don't want close games. I don't want a good series. I want the Dodgers in the World Series. I want them to sweep it. And I want every game to be 13 to nothing. I know, right? I don't want the stress. I want the happiness. Yeah. But there's a lot of happiness after stressful series. For sure. And right now, like after, right there. Yeah. If the Dodgers win game five tomorrow night, then I'll look back and say, man, what a great series. You know, back and forth and back and forth. Yeah. Right now, I hate the back and forth. I wish the Dodgers had yeah, swept the series. Me, me too. Do you ever wish the, the divisional series? would go longer than five games. Uh, yeah. Why I, do they not do that? I think it's crazy to have a five-game series. What, what they ought to do, my, my opinion, is season ends on Sunday, day off on Monday, Tuesday, game one of the wild card series, Wednesday, games two and three, if necessary, of the wild card series, doubleheader, Thursday, game one of a seven-game NLDS. 
it puts more benefit on getting that first round by less time off for the for the teams yeah. to get rusty less time off like the fact that there's the the Padres got a day off before the wild card series and two days off after means that their pitching staff wasn't at any sort of disadvantage for not having the buy and it's like what's the point of making them play an extra series if it's not going to be a disadvantage and so yeah. and, you know condense the wild card series expand the NLDS to seven games I and then, like, then you like get a much better chance of actually but MLB doesn't want the best team to win. They want the, the drama and everything. Yeah, I, I would agree. So so one last question before we get into the series itself. One of the, the things about baseball, there is so much time invested. It's I, I believe it's the longest season of any sports. I know MLS is a long season uh, in soccer, but I think the reason it, it is so hard to lose in the postseason when it comes to your baseball team is the time, love, and effort that you're putting in the whole year to see it all come down to one pitch in a seven game series. That's what I do. Do you agree with that? I I do. I, I, the way in my old age that I've come to accept this is I treat them almost as two separate things. The regular season is six months of awesomeness. That is a little more low key. I don't let myself get angry or frustrated during the regular season. I just don't allow it um, because it's a long season and we get six months as Dodger fans like the last 12 years, we've gotten six months of awesome baseball, you know, every single year. And then after that six month season, then there's a tournament that they also play in. And I, I have to treat them as two separate things because I really do think it's more fun to be a Dodger fan, even with the the postseason losses and stuff, than to be a White Sox fan or a Marlins fan or a, a team that, you know, Never is hardly that, yeah. ever competing. Like if ever. The, the six months. I'd have a hard time enjoying that if I, oh, my team sucks again. Let's go watch. You want to go down to the ballpark and watch our team lose? You know, like uh, we could go to Dodger Stadium and have a good chance we're going to hear I love LA at the end of the game. That's right. That's that's a really good point. How about the, how about the White, White Sox this year? That, that was terrible. We've already talked about that. The Tigers, though. The Tigers, the forever suck team. They're not forever suck. So, excuse me, Tigers fans. But they're in there. They're doing well. They're handling business. Yeah, and, and it's exciting for sure. The fact that they sold at the trade deadline. They traded Jack Flaherty to the Dodgers, and now there's a chance the World Series could come down to Jack Flaherty facing Trey Sweeney. Can you imagine? It, you know, like it, I, I would love imagine? it. Can you imagine? Flaherty didn't have the greatest outing to, to kick things off for us this, this uh, series. Th- this Padres team is a tough matchup uh, because they don't – if you're a strikeout pitcher, which Yamamoto and Flaherty both are, Padres don't strike out. And so it's it, it can be challenging for sure. I think there's – there's a reason the Padres were so inconsistent during the year. It's because you face different teams, and if you're facing a team that has really good defense, doesn't depend a lot on the strikeout, the Padres aren't going to do as well against them. The Dodgers, you know, specifically Yamamoto and Flaherty, are more strikeout guys. And we saw in Game Three when Bueller couldn't get a Bueller strikeout, was not throwing it, it was, you know, they put the ball in play, and unfortunately for us, good things happen for them. Yeah, uh, and, and so, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's just a crazy game of baseball that, like, you never know how teams are going to match up and, and how one team, it, you know, as Dodger fans, we wish there was more benefit to being the best team. Yeah, it's it's weird how that works out sometimes. You know, in fairness to Bueller, man, he had and dealt with some of the most unlucky situations oh, yeah. ever in a baseball inning, like, yeah. repeatedly. It, it's crazy. All six of those runs were technically earned because, you know, if – if Freddie recognizes that Manny's running inside the lane and just turns and flips it to Bueller at first base, then it's running on second one out. And then ground ball to Rojas. Well, there's no double play to try for because it's running on second doing? one Rojas, out. Rojas, that killed us. We Even after Freddie's play, if Rojas just flips the ball to Lux, the Padres score at most three runs that inning. Mm-hmm. And and totally different game. And who knows? You know, I was talking to my brother today. We can't just assume everything else would have gone the same. I don't know that Teoscar would have hit a grand slam if the Padres had only scored three runs because I think if it's 3-1, I think when it was 6-1, Michael King changes his approach a little bit, pitch him more to contact, and the Dodgers that's were able to get a few point. hits. That's a great point. And that's the thing. You can never just assume, oh, everything else, if this thing, one, one thing had gone differently, everything else would have gone the same. But, you know, it, it, what I said to my brother is, if the actual reality is the Padres scoring six runs in an inning, give me the alternate reality. Yeah, I'm with you. So I have to ask a question. Do you feel like Manny was out of line, literally running out of the baseline during that double play opportunity with Freeman? 
Unfortunately, no. It was a great baseball play by Manny, Manny Machado. I almost said Manny Ramirez. It's all right. Uh, you know, I'm a fan of Manny. Yeah, I, I, there was a Manny Part I liked. Manny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, it, it was a it was great base running. Unfortunately, it was, and he even accidentally made it greater. Freddie said after the game that he was a little surprised that Manny waited so long to veer into the lane. And I think if Manny had veered earlier, Freddie probably would have recognized it and just flipped the ball to Bueller at first. But because it was a late veer, Freddie had already kind of committed to throwing the second. Then Manny veers into the lane. But, but do you really think he was thinking about that while he's running? I, I, I do. I think, and, and what Freddie said after the game was, it's exactly what I would have done. That's what base runners are taught to do at the big league level. It's just like when you're on third base and you take your lead in foul territory and then you circle back into fair territory yeah, because right. you want to be between the catcher and the third baseman if there's a throw. You, your job as a base runner is always get between the thrower and the catcher to so that yeah. you have the best chance of ma making them make a bad throw, deflecting the ball like Manny did, or just making it hard for Rojas to catch right. the ball. You right. know, but but even then, if you look at the rule book, the way that is written, he did cheat or did not follow the rules by running into the grass. I I, I disagree because he did it before the throw was made, and so hmm. if he had veered, if he had seen Freddie making the throw and the throw had been made. And, and then, then he veered, he veered then he would have been called out and it would have been the right call. Interesting. But this, because he, he, he was saying, I'm going to get where I assume Freddie's going to throw it. There's nothing in the rules that says you can't guess correctly at where the fielder's going to throw but it. But you got to stay in the baseline. And there, he was not. There is no baseline unless somebody's trying to tag you. It's just like if you're, you know, if you're, you hit a double, you're not running straight to first base and then turning around straight to second. So he could run in the pitcher's in. mound if it was hit into the gap and right in center field. Absolutely. As Stand long as on the mound, it. run back, and, and he, as long so as he, he touches that. each base in order. Yeah. There's a college team that actually had their runner on first base take his lead into short right field. It was first and third. The runner takes a lead into short right field, knowing if if they if the pitcher throws it to the right fielder, tag him out. The guy on third can run home. They were trying to bait them into, okay, come get me. Because the farther you come to get me, the far, longer throw it is for you to throw to home when my guy on third tries to steal home. There is no baseline unless there's a tag being attempted to make. And then that's when the baseline is established. It's where are you as soon as they start trying to tag you? From there to the base, that's your baseline. Professor Snyder, y'all. I mean, this guy knows baseball 101. You don't want to go to my college. Hey, hey there you go. <laughs> that's pretty That's pretty impressive that, that you know all that. It was frustrating. I want to say that it was, absolutely he was out of line. Gosh, that was brilliant, though. Yeah. Really, like that's brilliant baseball. It, it, it's 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 instinctive baseball. Manny Machado. I I'm not convinced he's a smart man. Uh, he thought that the Dodgers were throwing at Tatis uh, when there was no reason. Like uh, yeah. it's you know there's it's the leadoff better. It's a close. It's three to one at that point. Why would we throw at Tatis? And if Flaherty's gonna throw at him, he's like, well, I've got a four seamer that I throw hard and straight. Or I have a two seamer that I throw less hard and less straight. Which one should I throw at a guy with? I'll do the less hard, less straight one. Like it, you yeah. have to just be totally clueless to think that he was throwing at Tatis. And Manny's convinced he's right. So I, I'm convinced that Manny isn't a smart man, but he is a very good baseball player and he has good baseball instincts on the yeah. field. He's actually a really nice guy. I mean, you talk to my wife; she loves Manny Machado with how nice he was to our family when we we ran into him. He's a, he's a good dude, but he's, he's got chicken he's, legs. He's, he's dirty. He's a bit dirty. Yeah. But uh, good on you, Manny. That was that was a brilliant play. Uh, next question: Who's your least favorite Padre? Jerkson Profar. I think he uh, is a whiner, and Manny Machado at least is a Hall of Fame caliber player. Jerkson Profar is having what the first good season of his career. <laughs> uh, I, I think if you're going to be that much of, if you're going to be that unlikable. You need to bet yeah. Madison Bumgarner, equally unlikable, but could back it up on the field. You yeah, know, I, I agree. When when he started taunting, I mean, he made one of the greatest catches I've ever seen in, in postseason baseball. Stole that from Mookie, but when he turned around and just kind of taunted the fans a little bit, that kind of took away from the greatness, in my in my opinion. Um, you know, watching watching uh, what's his bucket, um, Francisco Lindor yesterday after blasting that grand slam. And he was getting all sorts of props for being so respectful, just ran around the bases, you know. I think J Chipper Jones said something about it. But but watching Profar taunt, talk trash, 
I lost some respect for, for him there. Yeah, and, and he's excited, I guess. You know, it's his first home run robbery. It's in a big moment, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I, I assume if if we were Padre fans, we wouldn't have an issue with the way he acted. Uh, uh, but maybe. In, in that particular moment, there's a lot of things. Like, he also thought that they were throwing at Tatis on purpose. He, you know, he Profar is the one who thought Gavin Stone was throwing at him earlier this year yeah, when geez. Stone was throwing a perfect game at the time. Like, you think that he's throwing at you with the perfect game going? and Profar later admitted, oh, yeah, I didn't realize the game situation. Okay, well, may maybe think a little bit before you act once in a while. Uh, so, yeah, you know, for me, it's the combination of attitude and not – and the fact that he makes these diving plays when a, an actual left fielder would have just made routine plays on, but he makes easy plays look hard, and then yeah. people think, oh, what, what a great fielder. No, you know what? He's, he's lousy. He kind of reminds me of one of my brothers. Always has to make it look a little bit better. By is your brother watching this video? Do you want to name this brother by name? He knows who he is. <laughs> we 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 joke about it. I love you, brother. Anyway, um, let's talk about how the Dodgers are going to win this series. First of all, um, personnel that Dave has out on the field. Where is he struggling? I, I'm sure we're going to have the same sentiment or thoughts on this. But what where where can we improve? I I think he definitely improved yesterday with some of the adjustments he made. Where did he screw up? during game three in your mind? I, I wouldn't say Dave Roberts screwed anything up. You know, you could make a case that when Rojas had to come out of the game, they should have put Kike in instead of instead of Pajes. I think that's probably the right answer. Yeah, wh why, why not go with a guy that who always, no matter what, tends to perform in the postseason with Kike and bring in a young Pajes who is, I mean, he's got an incredible career ahead of him. Um, I definitely think that he's a great athlete, but Kike's got the experience. And experience in the postseason absolutely matters. Why did he go with Pajes? I, I think some of it was maybe the lack of experience. I think that there is something to the idea that Pajes can just go in there and, you know, I, I don't think Pajes is, is a guy who's going to be overwhelmed by being in the new situation. And so but one thing I was telling my wife uh, a few weeks ago, near the end of the regular season, we were watching, and then, like, Andy Pajas, I actually get excited when he comes up to bat. It's kind of like Shohei Otani without the upside, but the same kind of he might do something really cool here because he is just kind of – he's swinging for the fences, you know. And so there's a good – and he, we saw several times at the end of the season that he did hit a couple yeah, big home runs. He did great. And I think that was kind of the thinking was give him a chance and, and see if he can catch lightning in a bottle. Um, it was. It didn't work out, and and I think. I assume if it had been a tie game, uh, they probably would have brought Kike in, but they were kind of in a situation where maybe they, Dave was thinking, okay, we, we're going to need some big, some big blasts to get back in this right. something, you know, catch that lightning in a bottle. Uh, I, I still, I think I would have gone with Kike for sure. I, I don't think it's cut and dry, but definitely after game four, you know, we've seen what Kike did. We see what Chris Taylor did. I, I feel That's like Chris, man. You know, and I love Chris Taylor. Yeah. Who's not uh, a fan? He's made some of the greatest and most important plays for us in the postseason for the Dodgers in years past. And um, his and his defense is is really good. He's versatile. He plays good defense all over the place. And you know, give this to him. He didn't hit into double plays ahead of Shohei Otani. He just struck out so that Otani could come up and, you know, like th there's something to be said for not hitting into a double play, but I would definitely much rather have the nine hitter getting a base hit to get on in, on base in front of Shohei. Couldn't agree more. So for me, I, I feel like hopefully Freddie will be back in the lineup and it's Kike in center field with Edmund at, at short. Uh, I, I don't think we're going to see Rojas again. I don't think we should, man. He's I, the one hitting up double plays. Yeah, I, I feel triple like it, plays. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forget. How can you forget? Yeah. Uh, I will never forget that. That was That's why I need the Dodgers to win the World Series, so that that triple play, when it shows up on, you know, when I'm watching games on MLB TV and it does the flashbacks between innings, I know we're going to see that play forever, yeah. and I want it to be just a funny side note in a Dodgers World Series trip and not as heartbreaking it was, as it was that night. But, yeah, so I, if Freddie's back in the lineup, Edmund at short, Kike in center, uh, if, if Freddie's not back in the lineup, then – Kiki at third, Muncie at first. Muncie did okay and, at first, didn't he? And Pa has in center. Yeah, Muncie, people forget, and maybe people didn't even realize at the time. In 2021, Muncie was maybe the best defensive first baseman in baseball. And he didn't get a lot of credit for it, but he turned himself into yeah, an great. elite defensive first baseman. But like they were saying on the broadcast, he hadn't played first base in a game 
since he got his elbow blown out by Jace Peterson. Isn't that crazy? And, and, you know, so the fact that he played well there, you know, it's good to have that, that you've got that available. Hopefully, Fred will be back in the lineup. And I think and he will PK. be. He's such a competitor. Yeah. Were you surprised that they brought Kopech in in the third inning yesterday? I loved it. I, 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 I actually loved it, too. But a lot of people were like, what the? Yeah, what, 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 they, what they did is the only time you're guaranteed to face the top of this order in a close or close-ish game is at the beginning of the game. And so use your, use your pitchers. And so that's why uh, Dave Roberts, like, it, it was kind of funny. Rick Monday on the radio said that there's no script they're following. They're just winging it. And then Joe Davis on TV said, Dave Roberts is very closely following this script. And I think they're both right because yeah. I think Dave Roberts yeah. only had one script, and that was which pitchers do I want facing Tatis and Manny? Each time they come up, everything else will fill in the gaps. Who do I want facing those guys? Because those are the guys who are going to beat you. And so it was Brazier in the first inning, and then it was Michael Kopech. And it was like, yes, even once Dodgers were up 5 nothing by that point, and they could have said, well, let's adjust our game plan. And Dave Roberts, his mindset was, I don't want to win this game. I want to dominate this game. I don't want to give them any foothold. Six innings left. This Padres team could easily. We saw them For score sure. six runs in one inning last night. You know, five nothing is not. Which was BS. Yeah. I, I hated that inning. That, yeah. That's one of my least favorite innings of all of, time. Of my life, yeah. I was throwing things. Yeah. But bringing Kopech in there, it just kind, kind of going reverse. It was use the low leverage guys at yeah, the end exactly. when it's already eight nothing. You know, start high leverage. And, and you know, Man. this is probably your next question. I'm going to segue our, our conversation. Yeah. Game five, I hope they use an opener. I hope they, and maybe even. Yamamoto? Uh, no, I, I hope Yamamoto pitches game one of the NLCS. What I want is one of those high leverage guys who Dave Roberts trusts to get out the, the good part of the Padres order starting the game, whether it's Brazier again or Brazier great. or Trinan or Kopech even, you know? Uh, Man, if, if we pitch like we did yesterday, we I won't did. be beaten. They, I, that was so good. I just want a, unreal. I want a super cut of Trinan striking out my name Machado over and over that and over and over and over. Pitch, wasn't it? Yeah. It was an absolute gorgeous yeah. pitch. But so I, I want them to maybe even get through the first two times of Tatis and Manny with high leverage relievers and then see what the score is. And then you can decide, do we go to Flaherty or are we up 6 nothing? go to Ben Casparius, you know, give him a chance to hold it for a while. There, there's a chance you could get through it without having to use Yamamoto or Flaherty. And then you're set up for the NLCS. You can't play for the NLCS. You've got to win this game. But by starting with your high leverage relievers, you give the offense a chance to do their thing and and maybe get the best of both worlds. There are two pitchers that I find myself becoming more a fan of as time goes on. I am a big fan of Alex Bessia. I I just love that dude's ten- tenacity. I love his energy, dude. You watch that guy strike someone out, you know that he's proud and he's extremely excited. I love that. What yeah, do you think? He's not afraid of anybody. No. He, he is not afraid of any situation, and you want that. It's, what you, it's one of the things I love about Kopech, too. It's like he just... You can tell he walks in and he's like, I'm better than you. I'm going to get you out. That, that's, that's everything. When it comes to pitching, and this is, you know, I, I coach, we both do. When you tell a kid to get up, step on that mound, you look right at that, that pit, or excuse me, batter, and you say, I got you. Every pitch, you have to know before you step on that mound and throw that next pitch, you're going to win the pitch. And I see that from Bessia every time he's up there on the mound. From Trinan, I mean, yeah, you're not going to, you're not going to be perfect. But that mentality is crucial to success on the mound. Yeah. And I, I think there are still major league pitchers that don't understand that. I see that uh, out of uh, Bessia. I really do. Yeah, absolutely. He, he's, he's so much fun to watch. And, you know, he, he's, it's a tight, tight wire act sometimes. You know, he can yeah. be scary. But he also, he's got the strikeout stuff, even against the contacting like the Padres. Yeah. So he can get you out of a gym. And yeah, it, he, had, he had two guys on. With no outs yesterday. Mm-hmm. Still, got up on that mound. I got you. I got you every time. And his fastball, it's funny because it's its not thrown extremely hard, but it has such great life that it plays like a 98-mile-an-hour fastball. And guy, like I think it's more frustrating to bat off him because like that thing was 93, yeah. and I swung. I, I missed it by three yeah. inches. A 93-mile-an-hour fa- fastball, and I just missed it. You know, that's got to be Flat so out. frustrating for a, batter, for a hitter. For, for sure. You know, but it's awesome for a pitcher. Landon Knack also looked great last night, closing it out. Mm-hmm. He, yeah. He throws hard, and he, he's also confident. I and, love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, and Knack also has the same movement, the same right on his fastball that Vesia has. Those two guys, more than anybody on the Dodgers, have that fastball. They, call, they call it a rising fastball. It doesn't actually rise. It just drops less than the human yeah. eye expects it to. Yeah. And so it, it's, it's hard to hit. 
Do you think Chris Taylor deserves another shot in the postseason after his performance? Uh, not in Game Five of the NLDS. No, for he, sure. No, I'm talking um, about again. I, I think I, I think Chris Taylor can absolutely still serve a role, especially if Freddie Freeman is in the lineup, where you know you might need a pinch runner. You know, like Taylor and late inning defensive replay. I think it's absolutely the right call to get Tay Oscar out of the game in left field in the late innings because he is a bad defensive left fielder. He frustrates me. Um, Love him with a bat. Yeah, not in the field. Yep. Um, so I think Chris Taylor still has a role, but I don't think that role should be the starting lineup yeah. again in 2024. Uh, I'm with you. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about before we do a little giveaway, Mookie. I said, and I'm, I'm flexing here, I said this would be the postseason that Mookie finds himself. Mookie just has not been himself for years in the postseason. It's like something changed inside him, and when Mookie is on – you're not going to see a better baseball team. He's a leader. Guys, follow his lead. If he's performing, Shohei's performing. Freddie, I mean, all the Dodgers were in a great place. But as a leader, one of the leaders of the team, Mookie rising up like he has, it's been awesome to watch, right? Absolutely. And I'm, I believe that postseason magical ability is overblown. I think that the vast majority of players are roughly the same player they are in the postseason as they are in the regular season. Usually, most of them, their numbers will be down a little bit because you're facing better pitching in the right, postseason. Right. Um, but basically, the same player. And I, I think there's a very few guys who just relish that that pressure and actually do perform better. I think there's a very few guys who actually crumble under the pressure and perform worse. I think the vast major, majority of guys, including Mookie Betts, are just the same player. And Mookie Betts, if there's one thing to know about him, even in the, the big, long six-month seasons, he's streaky. And I think it's just literally he had a couple bad streaks the last two years and and i said it so many times and people were mad at me for saying it on my podcast like mookie's gonna be fine because he is a great hitter and there's nothing about and we've seen him do it in the postseason right. 2020 2021 yeah. he hit well oh yeah you know and so it's like we know he's not one of those guys who's cr who crumbles under pressure because we've seen him not crumble under that pressure so the only logical explanation is he had a to it was seven games. 2022 and 2023, the Dodgers played a total of seven postseason games. He had seven games that were bad. And that's we, pretty normal in baseball, We've seen plenty of bad seven-game stretches for Mookie. We've also seen plenty of – if not for if, – if that fan in the front row of game two wears a glove, Mookie has three, first, ten, first inning home runs in three straight games now. You know, if that fan Dude, doesn't – I did not get, think about that. If that fan doesn't get punked by Profar, how do you sit in the front row in home run territory – and not wear a glove, and not know the rules of what you're allowed to do. Like, I, if you're watching, fan, I'm not blaming you. But do, we kind of are, though. But do better. Like, my, you know? my dad was furious. My dad's like, what was that guy doing? If that was at Yankee Stadium, that was out in Philly, there would be blood, man. Uh, Those guys, no matter what, they're going after that ball. They'll fight like hell to get it. I was at a Giants-D-backs game in San Francisco in 2013, um, and I was sitting front row just down the, down the third baseline in foul territory. But a security guard came down the line before the game and talked to everyone in the front row and made sure they knew the rules of what they needed to do, what they could and yeah. couldn't do. I love that because if this fan, like, you know, sometimes I sit in baseline club at Dodger Stadium and down at the end where there's not a net. And, so, and, I, actually, and I know I, I'm an overthinker more than a lot of people, but I actually plan this out. Okay, yeah. if there's a foul ball here hit by a Dodger and the opposing left fielder is coming trying to catch this ball, I'm boxing that dude out. For sure. I'm staying on my side of the wall, but I'm bigger than him. I know that. For sure. You know, and I'm boxing him out. I, there's no way I'm letting a guy make a great play sure. in front of me. That's my responsibility as a fan. I think to that, remember Mike Talkman robbing Albert Pujols of the home run in 2021? Of course, of course dude. That, it, it cost the Dodgers the division. Dodgers lost the division by one game. If that's a home run, Dodgers win that division, yeah. don't have to play the wild card game. And it was because those people, the, yeah. they're called the home run seats. Your job is to wear a glove. And catch a home run, and you let Mike Talkman catch it instead. Where's Bartman when you need him? Yeah, give, give me put Any Steve Bartman yeah. in the front row of every Dodger game. Right? That's how it's done. Anyway, uh, we forgive you, guy. I, can't, I don't even know his name. Um, but yeah, And the fact is, you know, you brought out the worst in jerks in Profar, so the world got to see Profar, so that's good. We exposed Profar. Yeah. Well done. In fact, we're, we're a fan of yours. Wow. As okay. long as the Dodgers win game five, we forgive you. <laughs> anyway, you're going to see more of this here soon. Uh, with some of the stuff we're working on. Let's close this out. It's always a pleasure to have you, dude. Uh, but let's, let's end with a giveaway. So we've got this fantastic Dodger cap. 
New Era cap, Big League Chew. Um, we love Big League Chew over here, by the way. It's a beautiful hat. We are going to give this to any of the fans that guess the Dodger that hits a home run in the Game 5 uh, series ending game. Um, and then, what was it? We had one other idea. Yeah. You, you want to share that? Yeah. So when you make your guess, if you guess right who hits the home run, you're put into a raffle. You're in a, in a raffle to win the hat. But also, tell us what inning's going to happen. And if you get the player and the inning correct, then you'll have a chance to win $1,000 cash. $1,000 cash. If you're the only one who gets it right, the player and inning, you get 1000 bucks. If multiple people, people do, then another raffle for that. That's right. $1,000. That's, That's even better than a cool Dodger hat. I mean, this is a cute hat. I love it. I got one myself. $45.99. $45.99 value. Is, is less than $1,000. Right, right. With an exclusive Big League Chew hat. Both cool prizes. Or, though. excuse me, pin. That's a pin. Anyway, so we'll go through it one more time. Uh, the person who guesses the, the home run hitter, game five, will go into a raffle. So if multiple, multiple people guess it, you'll be in a raffle to get the hat. But if you guess the inning that they hit it in, $1,000 $1, cash. If someone else guesses the same thing that you do, it'll be a raffle between you and the others that guess the same. One guess per person? One guess per person. That's it. So that's all we got. Go Dodgers. Any any closing words? Yeah, I, I think words? Go Dodgers is the only, you know, it's almost time for Dodger baseball, but I think Go Dodgers is the only closing words right. we need. I'm praying for a Dodgers-Yankees series. Will we get it? We will find out. Until next time, sign our. Awesome. That was good.